Team, I'm going to keep it 100 with you and be real honest. I sat here in many days, actually, for the longest time trying to come up with something clever, some kind of like creative intro for this video to review this game, this title, and I've come up with a big fat goose egg. So to keep it short and sweet, the title of this game, it's a French word, Dordogne. I don't think that I'm saying it correctly but that is my americanized way and version of saying it but it's an area uh, a geographical region area and it's named after the river running through this area aptly named the river dordogne in fact let me just give my man rick steve over at rick steve's europe youtube channel a brief overview of the area six centuries ago this lazy river so peaceful today separated warring england and france imagine the French were up in that castle, and the English were just across the river. They duked it out for so long that the conflict became known as the Hundred Years' War. Dordogne, Dordogne, Dominic de Coco. And lei? Dominic de Coco. Come here. Dominic de Coco. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> All right. The question is, for the four to six hours of gameplay, about 30 achievements or so, and a 10 to $15 price tag is this charming coming of age tale worth your money and more importantly, your time. In short, maybe, 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 maybe. That's a strong maybe, but let's talk about it. The game's description. Immerse yourself in a unique narrative experience and explore the thousand summer colors of Dordogne as you revisit your childhood to uncover lost family secrets in this touching formative journey. Play as Mimi, exploring the precious recollections of your childhood and the time shared with your late grandmother. As past meets present, confront your adult choices with fond childhood memories to uncover lost family secrets. Developed by Je ne sais quoi, and I think it's it's either Humanimation or Amanimation and it's published by Focus Entertainment. Let's talk about the target audience. This game, this title is gonna be for people who enjoy single player games, slow burn games, uh, a heavily or a heavy narrative experience. It's wholesome, it's dramatic, it's casual, a lot of puzzle solving. You could call it cute, it's a cozy game. If you like games like The Quarry, you might like it. It's obviously way less intense. If you like games like Life is Strange, you'll probably like this game. This game, this title is not gonna be for people who uh, first and foremost are fans of games like shooters, action adventure, massively multiplayer, sports titles. Critics have described it as a very sweet and tender coming of age tale, a charming French indie art film come to life. That should say plenty about the type of game that it is. Let's talk about the art style. The entire game uh, is gonna be showcased in this hand-painted watercolor. And the devs, the marketing folks behind the title, they describe it as the landscape of a thousand summer colors, and they are not joking. It's gorgeous. But think that you're playing an animated watercolor painting. Similar to Greece, where you kind of feel like you're playing a painting or you're playing some kind of art installation. The same goes for this, except it's all watercolor. Let's talk about the core mechanics. The player, you, Mimi, you're gonna be updating and collecting things to fill your scrapbook. A lot of it is collecting the the sounds, you're gonna find tapes, you're gonna be taking a lot of photos, and kind of discovering and exploring this big house that you grew up in. And then you get to explore the surrounding area. So you get to go out in the woods, you get to go to the river, the river Dordogne. You get to go into town and meet some village people. You're also like talking to, because it's zooming in and out of the past and present, there are some characters that you communicate via phone with, or it's like a more modern day drama. So you're gonna be doing things like texting, you know, making phone calls in the present day where the fun actually is in my opinion is all going to be in the past so to be the kid to do all the exploration stuff climbing mountains collecting going on a canoe you're going to be reliving memories there's a lot of puzzle solving it's a lot of collection stuff and a lot of reliving memories in that way you could even call it like a, a super light adventure game let's talk about the story you the player you control a woman the character mimi who in the early 2000s travels to dordogne after your grandmother's death 
There you're gonna be reliving your childhood. This is done through exploring the childhood home, the immediate surrounding area, not just the house, but you know, different parts around the home, you know, the market, the woods, there's a large river, and you're gonna be solving a bunch of different puzzles and like piecing together your history and your memories through things that you find. There's also some mini games you could participate in. You're gonna meet some characters along the way that help you recall your childhood. So it's a series of flashbacks and flash forwards. You play as the grown up version of Mimi, and then you will go back in time and play the preteen version of Mimi as you explore and recall your memories from this area, from this time that you spent in Dordogne. I don't want to reveal too much about the story. It is a little bit dramatic. Um, there's a lot of family drama and drama between your family, your characters, and the people around the region. If I go too far into the story, it kind of reveals and spoils the whole thing. Let's talk about the content. There's about four to six hours of gameplay for about three and a half, four if you're just focused on the story, closer to six if you're trying to get all the achievements. I did 100% this game, it's not too difficult. You're gonna be collecting photos, sounds, taking a lot of pictures. It's a lot of exploration. And then you're gonna piece together this journal or scrapbook, and you're gonna be exploring all these childhood memories by the things you collect and take pictures of. Now this is a slow moving game. You know, you're not sprinting around. You're gonna be walking around. You're gonna go from room to room. It's one of those games with fixed angles. So when you enter a room, it's kind of like early Resident Evil. When you enter a room, you can't change the camera around. So it's a perfect like one shot game for streamers or creators. Or if you're looking for something to do on a, su a Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, you don't have any plans. You can knock this game out in one sitting. Let's talk about the QA. Now, it, this game's pretty much on everything. I played it on Game Pass on my PC with an Xbox controller. The only reports and things that I saw were toward the Switch. And I guess the Switch port wasn't that great. I don't know if, how many changes or what they fixed for it as of today. But of all of the issues or complaints, really it only it only came from the Switch. So if anyone has played it on the Switch, let me know if it's been improved, been fixed, but no real performance issues or bug bug complaints that I could see or find for anything else. So this is the type of game that won't be universally loved, not because it's bad, but because it's so niche. I'm not gonna say it's a title so unique that it belongs in everyone's games library. For me, a game like Dave the Diver or Sea of Stars fits that mold, but this game, this title has a very specific audience. I'd say buy only if, based on the footage and maybe some of your own research, uh, if you've had the chance to watch some gameplay and you're still interested, I'd say go for it. But for the average gamer, I'd say invest elsewhere. No shade to the game at all. It's a beautiful story and the art style is impeccable. The price isn't unreasonable either. It's 10 to 15 bucks, depending on where you're buying it. But unless you're a fan of narrative storytelling, puzzle solving, and the story being a young woman's coming of age type tale, this is not going to be a great buy for you. But the game for what it is, it's well made. That's it for me, folks. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate y'all's time. You can catch me at uh, Ghost Stories Gaming or Ghost Plays Games on all things social. Look out for the next review. Also, make sure to check out the Midnight Release podcast. You can find that here on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.